But now, 27-year-old me, I'm like, okay, time to lock in and tighten up. Because it was started to become a like big load. And when I was in Poland and I saw how much I owed, I was like, okay, this is disturbing. Like, I'm really not enjoying my life anymore because in the back of my head, I know I have this debt, like, on my back. So that's why, like, I came here and I was like, and I told you guys, like, I'm ready to, like, lock in and pay this thing off so that I can feel free and enjoy my money the way that I see you guys do. Hello, I'm Tijani Musa. And I'm Yasmin Musa. And this is how we're doing it. Welcome to How We're Doing It, a podcast where two first-generation immigrants authentically share their American experiences with fun and education. Suppose you're new here, welcome and thanks for joining us. If you've been with us since day one, you are our A1 and we appreciate you. Visit HowWe'reDoingIt.com to learn more. The details will be in the show notes. So, Yasmin. Yes. In the studio today, we have a special guest. Yes, we do. She's back. All right. She's back. She's back again. We are talking about the one and only my sister-in-law. She is a mom. She is also in the army, a.k.a. Sergeant Yeni Zib. I'm back. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Put some respect in her name. So, Yasmin, talk to me. What are we going to talk about today on this episode? Today's a special one because when Yenny came back from deployment uh, in April, mm-hmm. we began talking about her financial journey and how she wanted to get out of debt. So today, she's going to update us on how her debt-free journey is going. All right. So, let's set the stage first. Okay. The listeners know about our financial journey or budgeting or whatever the situation is, Mm -hmm. right? We've talked about that. We've shared our journey, how we got out of debt. And then my sister-in-law also is aware of our journey financially and how we've been working along the way, you know, talking to each other, supporting each other, motivating each other to try to get out of debt, paying off our debts and everything. So she's aware of this story. But... You know, this was uh, back back in the day, a few years ago. She's aware of it, but she's never taken, you know, she's never taken the initiative or the next step in her financial journey. And so lately, she's been, you know, when, since, since coming back from uh, deployment, we've been talking to her more about finances, and she's find the energy and motivation behind that. And she's taking, she's taking that first step in understanding her budget. And so now she is working with us to try to live that debt-free lifestyle. That's right. So we just wanted to set the stage so we know what we're talking about when we talk about, you know, this money stuff. And she's doing it. Like, she is paying off things. Mm -hmm. We are the ones holding her accountable. She trusts us enough to share numbers and share details. So today what we want to dive into is really just what's going well, what have been some challenges, and then how can we continue to support her? So we invite you to listen along. That way you can learn. This is our coaching um, done live and with an actual person. And, of course, it happens to be family, so it's a special one for us. That's right. That's right. This is live coaching right here on how we're doing it. So that said, do you have a first question or you want me to go ahead and ask the first question? You can go. All right, so here's the first question for you, Yenny. When you hear about money and living on a budget, what are some of the fears that you had going into the journey before starting that budgeting life? Um, I didn't know you were going to ask this. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we can't, we can't give you the questions beforehand because we are all about authenticity in this podcast. So oh, we want, okay, okay. Yeah. She's panicking. She's panicking. <laughs> Yeah, so you you've heard about budgeting before, right? Yeah, you've you've heard people talk about it, throw the words here and there. So the question is like, why didn't you engage in living on a budget until now? So what what was holding you back? Honestly, myself, I was living a very carefree life. That okay, I ran up the credit card. I didn't never really focus on paying off a car. I kept getting new ones and obviously negative equity adds up as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think 
and I also said, like, I'm a single mom. Like, my money is all over the place. And I never wanted to sit down and look at how much I was actually spending. Because low-key, I was scared of seeing the numbers myself. Mm. Um, But when you hear budget, it's like, oh, I have to live almost, like, restricted. And back then, you know, 25-year-old me, I wasn't going to do that. I wanted to live my life. But now, 27-year-old me, I'm like, okay, time to lock in and tighten up. Because it was started to become a, like, big load And when I was in Poland and I saw how much I owed, I was like, okay, this is disturbing. Like, I'm really not enjoying my life anymore because in the back of my head, I know I have this debt, like, on my back. So that's why, like, I came here and I was like, and I told you guys, like, I'm ready to, like, lock in and pay this thing off so that I can feel free and enjoy my money the way that I see you guys do. Mm. Wow. That's really powerful. I mean, when we went through our debt-free journey, this was back in 2020, and at the time, you must have been, what, like 24, 23? 20, 20, yeah, yeah, she, she was young. 20, 24. Mm-hmm. You were young. Your mentality was definitely different. But I remember you, like, I would come to you and tell you, like, oh, we're getting out of debt, and we're, like, doing, you know, X, Y, Z to, like, lock in and make sure we do this. And you were really proud of us. You were very supportive. Mm-hmm. So along the way, as your older sister, I thought, oh, she's going to see that we did it. She's going to do things to prevent going into debt or Mm -hmm. she's going to do things to help her financial journey be better than mine. Right. Right. But I never actually checked in with you. Are you actually doing that? Like, do Mm. you have credit card debt? Those were questions that I never really asked, you know, and I think it goes back to the fact that in our culture, in Latino household, we don't talk we about don't talk money about like that. <laughs> nah, money is like Bruno. Private. Yes. Yeah. We like, I don't know why. I don't understand it. I mean, I guess I do. It's like a pride thing, I feel mm-hmm. like. You don't want to demonstrate the bull, like you're being vulnerable by sharing too much. But I feel like that's, that's why we're changing that narrative mm-hmm. for the sake of our children and for the yeah. sake of like our family actually building generational wealth. If we want to do something, we got to get it together. Mm-hmm. All of us. Fact. Yeah fact that's that's exactly what (laughs) needs to happen and it starts with conversation and talking about uh these taboo topics or subjects that you know growing up we didn't want to talk about and so you you'd mentioned you know being a a, a single mom so how what are some of the motivating factors that keeps you on the budget not having like an accountable accountability partner like yasmin and i we're working together right she pushes me and i push her push her back to get to where we needed to be but as a single mom, you don't have that person to motivate you. How do you keep yourself motivated? Honestly, the numbers. Just seeing them go down every month that I pay more and more off. And, yeah, just watching that number get smaller. I'm like, okay, yeah, like I'm doing it. And I'm going to keep going until it's fully at zero. Wow. That's amazing. Wait, um, how have you been supporting? How have we been supporting? So can you answer to Johnny? Like, what are some ways that we check in with her to help um, hold her accountable during the month? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that, you know, this has happened. So first of all, Yasmin sat with Yeni and they talked about it, right? So there are like two, you know, known methods of paying off debt. You, you can do the avalanche method which is like you pay the big one all the way down to the small one first. Or the you, big one in terms of interest. That's the right. The one with the highest interest rates. The one with first. the highest interest first. You pay you pay the highest interest first and go all the way down from, from that ranks. And then, or you can do the snowball method. You go based on the actual amount of money that you owe. So start with the smallest yep. and work your way up to the largest. Exactly. So if you if you if you're picturing like a snowball, you start on top of the mountain, you throw a snowball, literally throw a snowball as it goes down the mountain, it starts to uh, build up and then starts to basically collect more snow as it goes down. And so the snowball method is you pay the lowest amount first and then you tackle it based on the lowest amount and go all the way walk your way up to the big amounts. And I like that method because psychologically it helps me. You know, you pay off the first, the small amount, and it motivates you to pay off the next amount. But if you start with the biggest amount, you feel like, you know, man, I'm about to tackle this thousand dollars. It's gonna take me several paychecks to pay it off. Com- compared to like a hundred dollars, it takes you like one or two paychecks to pay off a hundred dollars. So I like the snowball method first. So you sat with Yenny and talked to her about, you know, 
this is what needs to happen this is how much money you owe right now and this is how it could protect this is how many months or how many years it could take you to pay off this loan and so for us how do we help her um what i started doing is i know that she receives paychecks at least twice a month the middle of the month and the end of the month so whenever her paychecks kicks in i send her a message like a text message saying that hey you about to receive a paycheck tomorrow make sure that you know you keep yourself on that you know the plans that we've we've you know arranged for you make sure that you take care of your debt i know sometimes things come up that you don't plan for but at least you know stay on track whatever money that you have left over make sure that you send it to your debt so that's what that's the type of help that we've we've been able to help her but now that she's with us here physically we also motivate her you know like we talk with her and and motivate her but when she's not with us physically we send her text message or stay in touch via phone yeah and then i think um it's about like because the numbers are big like that's that's the reality of it like it's not like you started off with like a small medical bill right and yeah, no. you know you pay it off and it's like yay okay i have my first win your your numbers are pretty big so i think what we need to do is like set little milestones like when you pay off this amount you're gonna celebrate like you're gonna do something that you want to do for yourself spend a certain amount of money on you mm -hmm. or you and your son and that way you celebrate because that's what's gonna keep you going encouraged to keep yeah. going yeah. yeah for sure just make sure that you know the celebration is in the budget <laughs> it's mild <laughs> <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> Don't go back into debt for it. That's right. <laughs> well, she's she's doing very well. So here's what I want to do. Unless you have other questions, let's let's have Yeni, you know, talk to us and give us like the starting numbers, where she are right right now, and how she's going. How how's she doing right now? Yeah. Where did you start? Okay, so my starting total, and this was just a credit card and my car loan. It was $60,594.16. Quite a big number. Wow, yes. yes. But definitely doable. Yes. And how is it going? Now, as of today, August 1st, I'm at $47,964.62. Wow, and you've paid off how, how much? $12,629.54. And how many months? Four. Wow, Woo! let's go. <laughs> That's great. That's amazing. That's a big start. Of yeah. course. It of course. Good. Yeah. How, she's already answered the question I haven't even <laughs> asked. How does it feel like actually describe <laughs> your emotions to us? How are you feeling right now? It feels good and it feels possible to get it to zero and it feels liberating as well. Like I like I said, watching that number go down, like I feel like I'm closer to financial freedom. Yeah, you are. Yeah. You really are. I think every step that you take, as long as you're intentional and your mind is in focusing on getting, you know, I'm going to get out of debt. Like you stay encouraged, you stay the path. I, I think it's definitely possible. And right now your lifestyle is, you know, it's a little bit up in the air. You have a big move coming up. We're going yeah. to our next duty station. There's some things that you got to figure out. Can you tell us, like, how how are you preparing for that financially? Um, well, I knew going into the PCS that I was going to have unexpected expenses. So I've kind of, like, always mentally just thought, okay, don't spend too much here because you might have to use this little bit for whatever comes unexpectedly, which I've been able to cover everything. So wow. I'm glad I just planned ahead a little. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. And... Talk to me. Do you have a thousand dollars for emergencies? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because that was our first I don't, step. Yeah. Once we like sat down and made like the plans of like, okay, this is what you're gonna do, and, like, and you told me like leave those thousand dollars. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. that has stayed there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. That, that's amazing. Let Let's go back to the word that you just threw. You know, you just passed. You, you said financial freedom. What does financial <laughs> freedom mean to you? What What does that look like? Uh, owing no money. Using my money in whatever, whichever way I want, which the focus is save enough for a down payment on a house. Because after Hawaii, that's where I'm going to next. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to purchase my own home. 
whether it's here near you guys or somewhere else in Texas, because I probably will come back to Texas. That's what that's like the goal, like a house, because I want one for me and my son, whether I'm with someone or I'm still a single mom. Like, you know, that's not I'm not taking other people into consideration. Like, that's just my main focus. And I know with my VA loan and however much money I can save up from here to like 2027, once I'm done with Hawaii, Mm -hmm. I'll be pretty good, I think. I think you'd be more than good. So this is I, I like it. I like I like where this is going and we will continue to be here to support you and help you, you know, get to accomplish all the goals that you have set forth when it comes to your financial freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Can you talk to us a little bit about what are some of the challenges that you've faced or what are some things that have been difficult during this time? I mean, you're in it four months now, so. Yeah, I think it's, like I said, having to restrain from shopping and buying whatever (laughs) I want. Like, it was summertime, and I was like, I need summer clothes. I came back from Poland where it was freezing, and I'm like, now I need summer clothes. And I was like, wait, but, you know, I don't have, I can't be spending that much money on clothes anymore, so let me see what still fits. Let me see, like, what do I really need? What are the essentials? Honestly, right now, it feels like I'm wearing the same clothes every single day, but it's fine. I'm not, I don't want to buy anything until I feel more financially secure and, like, fit it into the budget. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, <laughs> this is this is a good one because my sister in law likes to think that every time she sees me, I'm wearing the same outfit. <laughs> she doesn't say that. <laughs> For ten years. <laughs> Why is TJ wearing the same outfit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she and you so are an outfit repeater. <laughs> You see, you see. <laughs> I just, I just had to throw that out there you because you had it right all along. <laughs> wow, see, ah. yeah. you're onto you something. see, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know what? Let, let me just tell you one thing about my sister-in-law. She's, she's very, very nice and very kind. <laughs> she's giving us so many things from like Jasmine, from Leo's stuff. Literally, the bed that we had in Manassas, she gave us the bed and she gave us the bed sheets because <laughs> <laughs> because every time she moves, I she give she gives everything away yeah. every time. But this time around, her move is very, very different. <laughs> she actually went back to El Paso and packed up everything that she has there and shipped it. <laughs> so it, it's, ama- it, it's amazing the way, you know, the mental, you know, when, when you just that sit, shift. exactly. When you just sit down and say, you know what, I'm going to commit to something and I'm going to do it and accomplish it for me. And then, you know, for you, you have for you. And then also for your son, the amazing and, and magic thing that happened when you actually sit there and just be intentional about something. Yeah. I definitely saw the shift too. like for her birthday. She'll normally tell us exactly what she wants. <laughs> and this time I was like, okay, what do you want? And she, she's, she still wanted new stuff for her apartment in Hawaii, but she was like, okay, I want like this set of pots and I want this set of like a uh, dining set. And that's what w- my parents and I and us got her as her birthday present. Right. And I think in the past she would have just been like, oh, I want it. I'm just going to buy it. Yes. Yeah. And then you all can get me whatever else for my birthday. Yeah. But this time around she was like, no, I want it. And it's my birthday, so I might as well take advantage. So that was a huge shift, I feel like, for her. Yeah. Absolutely. And and let's just be, you know, clear, right? When, when we talk about budget, it's not about, like, restricting you from not doing what you want to do. It's just a budget is just telling you, you know, this is your money. We want you to take it and assign it to different tasks. And then what that does is that you're mindful of your money when you're spending it. And so that's the difference. Before... Like, for example, I would tell, you know, Yeni, my birthday is coming up and she would just buy me stuff. But now, like the past birthday, she didn't buy me any gift. That's because I, I wasn't in the everyone, budget. This year, I was like, you're not getting any gifts. We, we, we didn't make it on the budget, so we ain't got no gifts. Yep. So, you see? And that's okay because she's made up for it with other gifts. Okay? That's right. That's right. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you don't make it on the budget, don't be mad that you ain't getting nothing. Because you're not on the budget. So yeah. that's how that works. You take a dollar and assign it to a task. That helps you understand 
how much is coming in and how much is going out. Yeah. And I mean, and along this process, I think a lot of people say like, well, I'm on a budget, I'm restricted and I can't do X, Y, Z. Do you feel that way? No. <laughs> okay. Um, because right now, especially that I'm home. Well, okay. Right now that I'm home with you guys, I don't feel that way. Cause I'm like, okay, let's go do this. Like I take the kids for ice cream at least once a week. Yeah. And that's just part of the budget. Cause I'm like, I want to do things with them, you know? But when I was home, I was like, I can't spend more than what I need, which is food, gas to go to work. And that's it. My rent, my utilities. And that's it. Like, that's all I was spending. But then if I was coming home, like, you know, I got to think about like now I'm paying double the gas because I'm driving Mm -hmm. home and that's a nine hour drive. At least I got to stop for gas at least twice. Mm -hmm. So I was just taking those things into consideration. But um, I don't know. Like I said, because I was planning ahead, I was like, I'm not going to use this money in El Paso. There's no point. And I'll save it for when I'm in Dallas with my family and then I can spend it then if I really need to or if I want to. Yeah, I love that. I think it's all about having a plan and just keeping that in mind and. You're doing it like you're you've already paid off over 12,000. Yeah. So it's you know, you're in that process. So now let's talk about your big milestone. What do you want your big milestone to be? or your I guess your first milestone that you're going to celebrate by doing something that you want? Um, it'll be paying off the card, the car, the credit card the credit completely. Card, yeah. You think you can wait to celebrate for it? Yeah. Yeah. Because at this point, I'm like so close, I feel. Okay. Like if I started at twenty one thousand, owing that, like, mm-hmm. and now I'm at, down to nine thousand, I'm like, ugh, in a few months, I'm done paying it all. Okay. All right. I like I, it. I believe so. I believe she can knock it off. Yeah. She can knock it off, and especially you know when now that she's moving to Hawaii, uh, some expenses are cut down from what she's used to. She can take that money and roll it up to the next you know payment. Yeah. She's yeah. She's. I, I believe she can knock it off by the end of the year. I yeah. think so too. Oh, definitely by the end of the year. Yeah, by the Hopefully. end of the year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We got. Are we in August? Yeah, we have a good five months till the end of the year. Yeah, so. I think she can do it. I think so too. Um, uh, one one thing that I wanted to ask also is, um, how do you think Leo plays into this? Do you think Leo feels deprived, like not doing enough? Um, what do you think his experience is like so far? Um, I think he has noticed a little bit because. I swear, every store we go into, he wants at least three things. And if not, you know, at least one thing. And I'm usually the mom to be like, okay, yeah, bring it all. But now I'm like, no, only one thing per store. And then <laughs> <laughs> I still can't say no to him like that. But now he'll be like, mom, I want sushi. Mom, I want seafood. I want octopus. And I'm like, you got octopus money? <laughs> Like, for what? everything. I'm like, you got this type of money? Like, McDonald's. You got McDonald's money? Like, and then he'll be like, no. Or he'll resort back to the $21. And <laughs> he doesn't even know was shipped to Hawaii already. <laughs> in his piggy no. bank. No. Yeah, they're in the piggy no. bank that was shipped to Hawaii already. Oh, my God. <laughs> but everything is the $21 that he has. Leo will be the one that made you spend $1,000 and still talk about the $21. Yeah, he'll <laughs> like, I'll just give you $21. Oh my god! I had no idea this money's already <laughs> on its way to Hawaii. Yeah, but I don't have the heart to tell him. Oh, <laughs> he literally brings it up every time. The other day, he was like, "I have twenty one dollars for sushi," and I was like, "That's not even enough for one roll." <laughs> yeah. You, you remember we we went to the, the La Pulga and La Pulga. Yeah, he pretty much wanted us to buy him so many things there, <laughs> and we came home without buying him anything. The first, as soon as he entered the house, what did he do? He told his mom, they yeah. didn't buy me anything. And he told me, he was like, they didn't buy me anything. And it was so hot. <laughs> he was complaining. You know what, though? He's spoiled because he goes his with my dad yeah. and my mom. And they will buy him whatever he, he wants. He touches, yep. Whatever he touches. Like, he'll go up to a toy and they'll be like, you want it? Okay, grab mm-hmm. it. Yep. He would do that with us. I'd be like, no. Let's go. Yeah, Let's go. the grandparents <laughs> the grandparents definitely messed him up. Well, it's not a messed I up. Mean, they spoiled it, him. It, it, the grandparents. the grandparents do what grandparents do. So, yeah. okay. We were in El Paso and we were on post. We were going to the PX. You guys know the post exchange, which mm-hmm. is where it's just for us military. Well, at least for the base. 
Anyways, I'm, we're going in and I tell him, I'm not buying you anything. So don't be grabbing stuff. Don't think I'm going to buy you anything. And then immediately dad goes, I will. I'll buy it for you. I <gasps> oh was like, my oh, my God. God. <laughs> Completely yeah. defeating the purpose. Exactly. But the I'm parents. Like, Whatever. You're the grandparent. Go ahead, big spender. Wow. The grandparents don't help. They, they literally do what grandparents do. They are always against the parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. So do you have any other questions? Because I have one question. Um, yeah, I guess th- just like you, you already know how we've been supporting you this way. So what else can, what's something else that we can do to help continue to support you on this journey? The check-ins really help. Um, the messages from TJ when he's like, okay, you know, at the end of the month or the beginning of the month. Yeah. Um, yeah, just the check-ins. Cause they'll be like a little reminder and I'm like, okay, like they're actually like holding me accountable. Yeah. Yeah. And like, um, but also like, because I'm in between like PCSing, just let you guys letting me like stay here. Like that has been like a big help as well. Cause like right now you guys aren't bugging me about like food money. I'm just kind of like, oh my God, leeching off you guys. <laughs> you, you barely eat. <laughs> and because right. I'm not paying rent, like it went straight to like the payments. Right. So luckily <laughs> I don't hey. gotta pay rent here. She barely eats. <laughs> I think I think I've been buying like extra tuna. That's the only <laughs> thing. That I've been maybe buying a little more of, but oh, okay. But well, that's good. That's what family is for. Because we, when we were getting out of debt, we did the same thing. We went to Yasmin's parents, and oh, yeah. we 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 stayed there. We were paying rent, but we weren't paying market rate rent. And yeah. so because of that, we were able to save up money that helped us do a down payment and also move across the country and coming to Texas. So. That's what family is, uh, is is for. As you move up, you look back and reach for the next person. Yeah. yeah. And usually I don't like to do that, to feel like I'm leeching off of <laughs> anyone or anything. But right now I'm like, okay, I need to focus and I'm just going to take the opportunity that I have right now. Yeah. We, we would never describe it as leeching. Never. <laughs> I don't know another word for it. <laughs> yeah, no. I feel like a bum. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're doing fine. You're doing well, that- I mean, it helps. I mean, there's two households. Like, she's here with us, and she's also with my parents. So, if she's not eating with us, she's eating with mom and dad. You know, she's eating somewhere. I mean, sleeping somewhere. <laughs> if we want to talk about leeching, I mean, when when we when we give her Jasmine to watch her and we go on dates, we don't pay her. <laughs> no, but we bring her sushi. Yeah, that's true. Last time y'all brought me a sushi roll. Yeah, but she 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 takes care of the kids she buys yeah, them ice true. cream I she, always tell to she Johnny, helps a lot yeah i always tell to johnny i'm like i love when yenny's here because <laughs> she helps me the other day she helped me deep clean the house exactly that was like huge because i can't do much of that anymore i'm too pregnant in too much pain and then she helps with the kids which is a huge help and then just like having like someone yeah the extra I can, hands. like yeah the extra hands like the kids, we're at a point where they're constantly fighting one mm-hmm, another, mm-hmm. like twenty four seven. If they're up, they're fighting. Yeah. Yep. And so it just helps to have more people than kids, more adults than kids. Yep. More eyes on the kids. Control them. That's right. So I have I have a question. If if someone is debating on whether to start budgeting, or just live life on a budget, and they don't know where to start. What were some of the advice that you could give to them? I think just start. <laughs> no, <Nah>, I'm kidding. <laughs> really sit down and look at your money. And sometimes it almost feels embarrassing. Like if you were scared like me to actually sit down and see the numbers, like it's a little scary. But mm-hmm. once you realize that like, okay, you have this financial goal, like you really need to sit down and see the numbers and see where things you know, where your money is going into and where you can, like, start moving it to to where you can reach that goal. Hmm. And how how did it, how, how, with the same person, that that person who is also in the fence of whether starting a budget or not starting a budget, and also if they are single, whether, you know, it's a single dad or just a young person trying to get on a budget, what are one one or two things that you can tell them about, you know, holding themselves accountable without having an accountability partner? That's a good one, huh? Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> Focus. Lock in. 
Okay. And if no one else is going to tell you, I will. Because it's better to lock in right now and enjoy your future, your financial freedom future, than to be struggling later. Because honestly, I wish I would have budgeted a year ago or at least two years ago instead of finally this year to where luckily I started. But, you know, I wish it hadn't came to this point. Yeah. So just think ahead. I like smart. I like it. I like it. I think, you know, it's all for Yasmin and I, we always talk about the word intentionality, right? You sit back and uh, think about, you know, what is life going to be like in a year or two years if you don't have debt? What could you, what are you able to do if you don't if you don't have if you have your whole picture comes in and it sits right there? You don't owe anybody money. What is life like? You know, compare that to what you're living right now. You owe a thousand dollars. You owe twenty thousand dollars. But every paycheck, when the paycheck comes after paying all your bills, you still have to send a hundred dollars or hundred fifty dollars to the debt. So, what would life be like if you don't have any debt? You don't owe anybody any money. What does that look like? And use that as your why to try to get out of debt, and use that as your motivation to get yourself out of debt and live on a budget. You got it. <laughs> I think that if, if you're really struggling, I think finding like a friend or somebody that can help support you, check in with you, someone who has, you know, like like minded, similar goals. So find someone if you're really struggling on your own. Mm-hmm. Worst case scenario, reach out to us. We'd love yep. to support you. They're great help. That's a best case scenario. It's not worst case. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you really don't have anyone else. Yeah, yeah, reach out. Reach out. We'll definitely be here to help you and support you to get you to where you need to be. Any last words? My sister-in-law? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for the next check-in because the numbers are just going to be lower and lower. I love it. We can't wait to check in again. When You know what? The next check-in, we're going to do it in Hawaii, baby. <laughs> That means we got to travel with equipment. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we can't just record on the phone. <laughs> we'll try to be creative. Okay. We'll, we'll find out. We'll do, we'll, we'll do what needs to be done. Okay. <laughs> by, tra- by a travel set. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Invest on the podcast. Mm-hmm. That's right. Send us some money. <laughs> <laughs> Extend Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, the website link will be on the show notes. Uh, if you have any questions about what we're discussing, just go on our website at howwe'redoingit.com. You'll find out everything you need to know about our podcast and what we're up to. Thanks for tuning into How We're Doing It. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to our stories and experiences. If you find this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave us a review. To stay connected, visit howwe'redoingit.com for more details and follow us on social media. Until next time, keep thriving and stay inspired.